So this hadith is narrated by Abu Hurairah anhu, and he said, "قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني." And this is narrated by Imam Tirmidhi rahimullah. So the hadith, the translation by Abu Hurairah said, "The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من حسن إسلام المرء from the excellence of a person's Islam." تركه ما لا يعني leaving what does not concern him. Is that right? Now, people translate it as mind your own business. Is that right? Is it clear? Okay, so I'm done. What? I thought the hadith was clear, guys. Is it clear or not? Do you have any questions about it? All right, here's a question. How do you know what concerns you and what doesn't? What is your business, what isn't? When something you can help with. Okay, so let me give me guidelines. So a person wants me to help him pack pork to sell. Can I do that? All right, so you got to put guidelines, right? The answer is no. So help, but what kind of help? Benefits. So benefits you. So you're being selfish. Others too. Type. What most people don't realize is that this hadith actually has two components. You're right, by the way, but I'm going to get to this section. I'm just going to give an add to what you said. By the way, this hadith, many of the scholars have mentioned that it's foundation of social manners. This hadith is the foundation of social manners, etiquettes, and behaviors in Islam. One of the great imams, um, uh, Muhammad ibn Abi Zaid, so he's a Maliki imam, he said that um, all good manners and behaviors are found in four hadith. This is one of them. Okay. So this is just one of the hadith. So really, it is, it is a very important hadith for interpersonal skills. Now, in Husn Islam al it means it indicates that a person... All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase it this one. Husn Islam, which means the excellence from the excellence of a person's Islam. It tells you that people are divided in two categories. Okay. People that their Islam are... Fill in the blanks. Hassan, good, which means pretty, right? No? Come on, guys. Excellence. I just I gave you translation. Come on. It means excellence, that their Islam is excellent. Submission is excellent at a very high rank. And those that are <laughs> less. <laughs> okay. So ones that is not so perfect. And you can figure out one from the other how by its fruits. One of the fruits of having an excellent form of Islam, your Islam is that excellence, is that you do not, what? Meddle with other people's business. No. It's that you leave what does not concern you. Now, I, the reason I don't like mind your own business or, or don't meddle with what's in your business, because people must understand that. When you try to advise them, they tell you, mind your own business. Not realizing sometimes that that is my business, by the way. If I see my fellow like, you know, brother who's falling into sin or doing something that is haram, it is my business to protect him. It is my business to tell him what you're doing is wrong. It's not that it's not my business. Only in the West it becomes not your business. Okay. Because everybody's so selfish, self-centered. But we're not. It's something else. That's one of the interpersonal skills. We care about others. So from the excellence of your, like, you know, your Islam, part of it is that you would have this aspect or characteristic is that you do not meddle with what doesn't concern you. Okay? and I, you leave what does not concern you. So once again, it's the fruit. But you cannot attain the fruit unless you have the root. Do you guys agree? So what is the root over here? Ihsan. What does Ihsan mean? Excellent. You worship Allah sometimes as if you see him. Or if you don't, knowing that he sees you. Good. Now, if I want you to imagine this for a second. Imagine that when you're praying, you're praying as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or knowing that Allah is actually watching you. How would the quality of your prayers be? 
Somebody lift up a finger, right? No, seriously, how would your prayers be? Do you guys pray? Are you sure? Nobody's saying yes. Okay, good, alhamdulillah. So how would your worship be? Better. Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't you perfect it? Yes? Oh, come on, guys. You would perfect it, right? You're presenting it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I want you to imagine you're dealing with this with every single aspect of your life, not just prayers. That when you're walking in the street, you're bearing in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Okay. You're so focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that your only concern is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that ihsan? Yes? Sisters, I don't hear yeses. Good, thank you. If you're so focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would you be distracted? No. You wouldn't, would you? When your focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amazingly acts as a distractant from other distractors. When you reach that level of ihsan, it enables you to leave what does not concern you. Because really you're concerned about who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what really this, this hadith really means to some, to some extent. That your focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you want to simple, okay, I'm going to simplify this a bit more or try to kind of hopefully it reaches. The way you determine what concerns you is by answering two questions. What am I doing and where am I heading? Why am I here and where am I headed? You guys agree? Why are you here? What are you here for? And where are you going? So, for example, we are at the convention, the Ikna convention, is that right? So you guys know what you were going to. Is that right? You know what you're going to do here. So you're going to prepare accordingly. Is that right? So you pack your bathing suits. Oh, sorry, that's the beach, never mind. I apologize. No, what, what do you do? You pack accordingly, right? You prepare yourself. Because you have a mission you're going to do here, anything that's going to distract you from your why you're here and where you're going, you're going to completely ignore it. Is that right? You guys all agree? Yes. Okay. So that is the case. By answering those two questions, what are we doing here? What are we all doing in this world? Why are we here? We're here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where are we headed? Al-Akhirah. Anything that would distract you from that is none of your concern. Because those are the two things that concern you. You're headed towards the hereafter. You want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that is going to distract you from that does not really concern you. Which also means that what concerns us and what doesn't is really determined by sharia. Determined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. You guys all agree? This is why I use the example, if I see a brother who's doing a sin, actually Allah told me and the messenger told me that he is my business. I have to care for him. Because you should love for your brother what you love for your self. In fact, it's not just your brother, it's actually the entire ummah. You want them all to enter to Heaven, to enjoy the pleasures of this world and the hereafter. When you see a brother harming himself, you want to keep him away from this. This is your business. But what they actually sometimes don't realize, I'm going to just add this, this has nothing to do with hadith, but just on a side note, is that people who actually do something wrong, they don't realize it's not that they're harming themselves only, but they're harming everybody else. Whether they like it or not. Because with every sin, a calamity can befall us. Sin, when it spreads into community, it does affect us as Muslims. Right. We see it out in the open. We need to stop that. And so really some of these things are, are as concerned. It is, like, you know, it is from our bounds. It is for what we need to um, care about and deal with. Now, one important about this thing that I try to mention, I try to mention as with the root and the fruit, is because many of us, for example, or it will explain to us why is it that we, sometimes when we try to progress and move forward, we end up sometimes falling back again. We regress a little bit. We all face that, don't we? Is that right? 
After Ramadan, how are we doing? We're like, okay, that's it. I'm going to pray, like, you know, Qiyam every night. Do you guys have that feeling? Yes? No? Yes. All right. I'm going to read the Quran at least one chapter a day, every single day. Right? I'm going to give sadaqat. You know what? Fasting too. I'm going to fast at least maybe Mondays and Tuesdays. If not, then three days a month. But do we keep to it? We say, you know what? This Ramadan, I'm going to stop everything that I was doing wrong. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to perfect everything. I'm going to leave everything that does not concern me. I'm not going to be involved with it. But sometimes we fall back. The answer is, the question is why? Well, I'm sure if you knew the answer, you'd have done it, right? Actually, the funny thing is, you guys know the answer. It's not that you don't. Yes, that's true. But you can easily fight him off by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, and dua, and asking him. It's because maybe perhaps we haven't attained the level of ihsan and the perfection of the religion that we should attain. Because once again, if all of us really are so focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, focused on our target in the hereafter, it would be easy for us to maintain some of these actions. And even if we fall, or like, you know, go back a little bit, fall behind, we get up so quickly again. Because once again, we're all human beings. It's not, we're not angels, we're human beings. We have our downs. It is very normal. The Prophet had mentioned, we have our ups. Right? For every action, there's like, you know, a high peak. Okay? There is a time of like, you know, a down period. We're normal like that. Our iman fluctuates and go up and can go down. This is a characteristic. We can fall. However, it is the quality of the muttaqin, the people who have ihsan, is that when that happens, what do they do? What do they do, Shaykh? Repent. Istaghfarullah. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا الله. Right. If they commit a fahisha, right, um, or they transgress upon themselves, what do they, they remember Allah? Right. And what do they do? Istaghfaru bihim. They ask for repentance. illallah. And who forgives sins except other than Allah? This is their state. And so, one of the largest problems that we have as individuals and communities is that maybe that we need to work on some of these things. We have to be honest with ourselves. And, and, and to be honest, it's a very bitter pill to swallow sometimes. Is to look at yourself in the mirror, mirror and call out your problems. Like your actual true issues that you have. Whether they're diseases of the heart. right? Telling yourself, okay, why, why do I feel jealous, for example? Why do I care about how many likes I have on a Facebook? Why am I even, like, you know, taking selfies and posting them? Is that sincerity? Is that not? Why am I getting involved in some of these things that are wrong? We have to face the other side of ourselves so we can correct it. And it's not something that is very easy. It is difficult. Because this is why people differentiate from one another. It's our test. Each one of us has his own test. We differentiate from one another by these aspects of how much we are able to overcome them. But what is beautiful and amazing is Allah's mercy is that He has promised us if we strive in His path, He will guide us. Those who strive in our path, we will guide them. Right? We just have to, once again, I'm collecting all these hadith together. We just have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to ask Him. We have to worship Him as if we see Him. Perfect all these things and in the end we would only be focused on what concerns us. And we leave what does not concern us and you would be amazed of what beautiful life we would have. Right? Nobody would be worried about gossip. Is that right? Come on, isn't this our current? Like, no, everybody gossips, right? No? You guys don't gossip? You know, lying is haram, right? We all like a juicy gossip, right? That's the fruit of, of like, you know, they say, فَكِهَةُ الْمَجْرِسِ That is the fruit of the sitting. Like, when you sit your friends, you're like, oh my God, did you hear what he said? Or did you see this post? Or do you see whatever it is? We forward other things, we forward other notes. Does that concern you? No, it does. Does it, does it help you in the hereafter? I'm going to go back to what you said, right? Things that benefit you, right? It is true. What concerns you are things that benefit you in this world and the hereafter. This is what you really should be focused on. And being good to others is beneficial. 
What is the, one of the heaviest things in scales on the Day of Judgment? Good, well, they're all good deeds, Sheikh. <laughs> Akhlaq, thank you. Good manners. Okay. The Prophet ﷺ had mentioned in the hadith that you're closest to me. Okay. One of the people closest to me are Ahsanakum Akhlaq, the best of you of manners. But we do it to please Allah. And so also, it really affects how we interact with others. When, they, when we hear that somebody had something or said something about us, and when they treat us badly, how would we reciprocate this? We'd punch them back, right? No, we wouldn't. What would we do? إِدْفَعَ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ Push back with what is good. Because really, we don't care about what you think. We don't care about what you say. All we care is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we know that He is watching us. We're so conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do our best in everything. And so whatever is going to distract us, you know, I'm not going to let you pull me into this issue. Right? I have better things to do. I'm trying to build my house in Jannah. I'm trying to work so hard so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love me. So that when He would love me, the angels would love me. And if Allah would love me, I'm definitely going to enter Jannah because He would guide me in every single aspect of my life. He would protect me in this world in the hereafter.